All right, let me reveal something to you about authority. We are to respect all authority and we are to submit to all authority. But a lot of people don't believe it, especially some Christians out there. But let me show you what this has to do right here with the Antichrist. We want to get it all connected here. Just follow along. Romans chapter 13, it says, Everyone must submit to governing authorities. For all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities will honor you. The authorities are God's servants, sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. For they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes too, for those same reasons. For the government workers, government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those in authority. Now, really quick, do you remember when the religious leaders asked Jesus, do you think we should pay or do you think that, you know, we should pay taxes to a Caesar? What do you think? And what did Jesus say? How did he answer? He said, Give Caesar what, Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. And then their reaction was just like, you know, amazement. They were astounded, like, wow, they were blown away. And that remains true. I understand that, you know, hey, what's this tax going on here? You don't feel like paying your taxes towards the city. You don't feel like paying your taxes towards the state. But what is money to us? Money comes and goes. So... Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to the man what belongs to the man. Even if you hate him. Give to the president what belongs to the president. Even though you hate him. But you are to give yourself to God. Because the government can't take away your salvation. The government cannot take away the kingdom of God away from you. The government cannot take away your relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. The government cannot take away anything that is for everlasting. They can take away temporary things, but they can't take away God away from your life. All right. So let's continue here. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 13, 5. And this does have to do with authority. But check this out. This is going to blow your mind right about now. I saw the one I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery. It's talking about the Antichrist system. But the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. They worshipped the dragon for giving the beast such power. And they also worshipped the beast. I just want to let you know that the dragon is the devil. And the beast is basically the Antichrist system. The Antichrist system is like a way of thinking. That's why here in this chapter it says the beast out of the sea. And then here it says... The beast out of the earth. The beast out of the earth is an actual man. You want to know how I know that? Well, what was Adam made out of? When God made Adam, what was he made out of? He was made out of earth. He was made out of the dirt, the ground. So, you got to see the thinking of the Antichrist. And then you got the earth, the man, that's actually going to come through. But check this out. It says they worshiped the dragon for giving the beast such power and they also worshiped the beast. So the devil gave power to the thinking of the system of the Antichrist. Who is as great as the beast, they exclaimed. Who is able to fight against him? Then the beast was allowed to speak great 
blasphemies against God, and he was given authority to do whatever he wanted for 42 months. Now, I want to remind you here. Do you remember Romans chapter 13 back there? It says that God gave all authority to, to government officials. Okay, to government officials. And he was given authority. Authority by who? Authority by God. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Do you remember Pompous Pilate talking to Jesus? Remember when Pompous Pilate said, hey, um, I have the power to release you and set you free. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, you don't have, the, basically I'm paraphrasing, you don't have power, not unless, not unless it's given by my father. I'm just paraphrasing. But Pompous Pilate would not be in that position of power if God did not give him that position, did not put him in that position. Pompous Pilate. I think some of you guys know what I'm getting to. Some of you guys. And he spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God. God who gave him authority. Slandering his name and his dwelling. That is, those who dwell in heaven. And the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people. And to conquer them. And he was given authority. Authority by God. To rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the people who belong to this world worshipped the beast. They are the names whose they are the ones whose names are not written in the in the book of life before the world was made. The book that belongs to the lamb who was slaughtered. Check this out. Number nine, pay attention here, because this is very important. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Anyone who is destined for prison will be taken to prison. Anyone destined to die by the sword will die by the sword. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. You see, this is the ultimate thing. When this system came along, like the system is... Here right now. It's right now. This system is going on right now. You can hear people blaspheming the, the, the name of God. The name of Jesus Christ. And they don't care about God. They're saying GD. They're saying, oh, Jesus Christ. Taking Jesus Christ's name in vain. When they get scared or when they get shocked or when they get spooked. But they don't believe in Jesus. So they're blaspheming God. They're blaspheming the things of the kingdom. Is slandering his name and his dwelling. But for God's holy people, those who believe in Jesus Christ, this means they must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful under the system of the Antichrist system. All right. Now, here comes the man, the actual Antichrist. Then I saw another beast come up out of the earth. He had two horns like those of a lamb. Then he spoke with the voice of a dragon. The voice of a devil. That's what a drag the dragon is. He exercised all the authority of the first beast. The authority that was given by God. I pay attention. I know some people this is controversial, but God gave this to me this morning. Pay attention. And he required all the earth and his people to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. He did astounding miracles, even making fire flash down to earth from the sky while everyone was watching. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, on behalf of the system, of the Antichrist system, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded in then came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that everyone refusing to worship it must die. Must die. He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, that's basically everyone, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark. 
which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666, or the asterisk says 616. Let's go down here. It says, Then a third angel followed them, shouting, Anyone who worships the beast and his statue, or who accepts his mark on the forehead or on the hand, must drink the wine of God's anger. It has been poured out full strength into God's cup of wrath, and they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb, that's Jesus. The smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever, and they will have no relief day or night, for they have worshipped the beast and his statue, and have accepted the mark of his name. This means, remember the last chapter right here, that talks about persecution. God's holy people must endure persecution. It says this means, and then it goes to the next chapter. It says this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commandments and maintaining their faith in Jesus Christ. There's two things here that God's holy people need to do. Obeying his commandments and maintaining their faith in Jesus Christ. There's no way that you're going to maintain his commandments without studying the scriptures. There's no way you're going to maintain his commandments. You're going to keep his commandments without studying the Old Testament and the New Testament. Not just the New Testament. And maintaining their faith in Jesus Christ. So that's two things that... God's holy people must endure in and through the persecution. Let me show you something else that's shocking right about now. Check this out. Jeremiah chapter 43. And I just want to remind you here, just to keep you up to speed right about now. So we went to Romans, talked about authority. God has given everybody authority as far as government officials. No matter how much you hate them, no matter how much you say they're, they're scheming and they're lying and whatever have you. It doesn't matter. God put them in that position specifically. It says it right there in the Bible. This can't be denied. If you deny it, then you're saying you're believing in a in a lie. I know, I know it, you don't feel like getting cheated. You don't feel like having certain laws put out there that go against God. But let me show you something, man. Let me show you something. As a matter of fact, I want to go over Revelation as well. When I read the book of Revelation, what did that bring up? In, in, your, in your mind, in your heart. God gave, is going to give the Antichrist authority. And I'm going to show you why in the end. Why he's going to give him authority. He already gave the system of the Antichrist authority. Say, so, yeah, okay, I'll give you authority. I know this is controversial, but just listen, listen. Your pastor, your preacher is not going to tell you this, but the Bible is going to tell you this. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said... While the people of Judea are, are watching, take some large rocks and bury them under the pavement stones at the entrance of Pharaoh's palace, here in Tapanhas. Tap then say to the people of Judea, This is what the Lord of heaven's army, the God of Israel, says. I will certainly bring my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon here to Egypt. I will set his throne over set his throne over these stones that I have hidden. He will spread his royal canopy over them. And when he comes, he will destroy the land of Egypt. He will bring death to those destined for death, captivity to those destined for captivity, and war to those destined for war. He will set fire to the temples of Egypt's gods, he will burn the temples and he will carry the idols away as he as plunder. He will pick clean the land of Egypt as a shepherd picks the fleas from his cloak, and he himself will leave unharmed. Now I want to go back up here. Did, did you notice this? 
God says, I will certainly bring my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, here to Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar is a servant of God. You want to know why? Because he was appointed by God. You see? Let me show you something else. Let's go to Daniel. Chapter 3, 13. And this is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they ran a certain province, or they were government officials themselves under Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar built a gold statue and said everybody under the king, under the king's land, must obey and, matter of fact, bow down to this gold statue, to this idol, when music was being played, or when horns were going off, or when, when flute was going off. It was the king's command to actually do this, Nebuchadnezzar's command. But Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, we're not going to do that. They refused. Now, let's see what happens here. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage. Flew into a rage. That's after he was told that Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego would not do it, would not bow down to that gold statue. And ordered that Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego? That you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made. When you hear the sound of musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the burning furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the burning furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Now, I want to tell you something about this. There's a difference between submitting to government officials and worshiping government officials. There's a difference. When you worship a government official, you'll do whatever they tell you to do. You see them as God. You see them as creating everything. You see them as creating your life. You see them creating the world. That's worshiping a government official. When you submit to a government official, that means you're, you're working under them, but you're not going to worship them. Yeah, you're, you're going to do what they tell you to do, but you're not going to worship them and say, they are my God. They can save my life and save my soul. You, no. See, this is why we are not to look at government officials as saving souls, saving our souls, saving our, like bringing salvation. We're not to do that. But we are only to look to God because Jesus brings salvation. God sent his one and only son and tried to teach us the best way to have a relationship with the father. He also tried to teach us how we can receive eternal life and walk with God because God gave us our bodies. God gave us our souls. God, God gave us food. God gave us water. God gave us air. God gave us the weather. God gave us everything that we needed to live an abundant life fleshly, but God wants to give us something even more. He wants to give us his Holy Spirit so we can live spiritually abundantly with him. All right, so let me continue on. Melchizedek was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbines, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. 
So Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. Let's see what happens here. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we did. They replied, Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. That asterisk is basically saying that it was like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They did not even smell a smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's commands and were willing to die rather than to serve or worship any gods except for their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from them, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Now, what does this all have to do with basically everything I read? We are to submit to governing authorities. That's what it said in Romans chapter 13. We must pay our taxes. We must do all this and all that as far as that. But we are not to worship them, right? And then if you go to Revelation, that talks about the system of the Antichrist. I'm going to say this. We are to submit ourselves to government officials, but we are not going to worship what they worship. We're not going to say, wow, they did such a wonderful, they did such a, they, they have such power. I wonder where they get the power from. Wow, man. Man, I want to know about that power. That means you, need, you want to know about the devil because the devil gave power to the system of the Antichrist. But God has given authority to the system of the Antichrist. I know this is controversial, but you have to remember that the system of the Antichrist is very, it's very, it's very in the government. It's in the government. Not just the American government. It's like it's worldwide. If it was not the Antichrist system, then it would be a, a Jesus system. It would be a Christ system. And everybody would be going to the kingdom of God. Everyone would have a relationship with God, but not everyone has a relationship with God. That's because of the Antichrist system. And that's the, that's the way that it is. Now, of course, I'm just going to say this. That do you remember when the devil rebelled against God? The devil rebelled against God because he wanted his own throne to be above God or as high as God. But God wasn't having that. So God tossed them out of, out of the kingdom of God. But on the way of tossing them out of the kingdom of God, the devil persuaded or deceived a third of the angels in the kingdom. These angels worked with God. They listened to God. And they, they, God commanded them to go wherever, go wherever. And they got deceived. They got pulled in by the devil's schemes. The devil, Lucifer, was one of the top commanders of God. How would you feel if someone so close to you always listened to you and then all of a sudden they said, all of a sudden they tried to, tried to, take, over, tried to take over the kingdom of God or try to be king or God of the kingdom of God? Your heart would be broken because you told them, you told them to do things that only they can do. You told them to go places only that only they can go. And they did a good job for a time, but you would have your heart broken. 
I'm willing to bet God had his heart broken when he saw Lucifer rebel against him. Like, yo, what? So I'm not going to have this. Yo, you got to get thrown out. That's it. And those angels that you persuaded to rebel against me as well, a third of the angels, they got to get thrown out too. They listened to me. They did what I commanded, but now they rebelled against me. And that breaks my heart too. And then God made Adam. And then Adam <clears throat> basically disobeyed God. Even though he was made by God. Even though he knew God. You see, this is what I'm getting to. God set the Antichrist system. Like, like not set it, but gave, it, gave the Antichrist system authority. And is going to give the Antichrist, Antichrist authority. Because he wants to see who truly loves him. As far as human beings. Remember, the angels, the angels worked with God. A third of the angels worked with God, and then all of a sudden they got pulled away from God. They rebelled against God. So imagine human beings. Human beings, human beings can say, oh yeah, I love God, I love Jesus. And then next thing you know, a third of the human beings that said that they love God, they can get pulled away by the devil, by the schemes of the devil. And they don't even know it. So God wants to see who really loves him. He'll give authority to the Antichrist. The devil will give him give power to the Antichrist. But God wants to see who truly loves him. Who will not betray him like the angels did. Who will not betray him like the devil did. Who will not rebel against him like, like the devil. And I think that's what God has in store, man. Again. You can read Romans chapter 13. You can go ahead and read Revelation chapter 13 as well. Authority was given by God, but the power was given by the devil. The devil knows that he's always going to lose. He always loses. But in the end, God is going to win. Jesus is going to win. Jesus already defeated death in the grave. So that's why it says, that's why it says in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and 14, it says, God's holy people must endure persecution. Persecution by who? Persecution by the Antichrist system. Persecution by the Antichrist. They must patiently endure and, and maintain God's commandments. And they must maintain their faith in Jesus Christ. Because in Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, bow down to the statue. Bow down to the statue. Bow down. And they were like, no. We're not going to bow down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So we should be the same way too. I'm not going to bow down to you. I'm not going to say someone else is my God. I'm not going to say this statue is my God. I'm not going to leave Jesus. If Jesus says I have one God, and I have one Father, and I have one teacher, then I'm going to say no to you. If you say I have another teacher, then I'm going to say no. I don't have another teacher. I have, God. I have Jesus Christ as my teacher. I have one God. And I bow down to him. I worship him. I praise him. Because he's the one that saves my soul, not you. And he wants me to join him. That's all I want to reveal to you. Listen, there's a difference between submission and, and worship. Right? When you submit to government officials, you're submitting to like, the work that they have for you. Okay, you want me to go over there? I'll go over there. If you want me to work over here, I'll work over here. If you want me to say this to these people, I'll say it to these people. But if it goes against the commandments of God, then I'm not going to say it. If you tell me to tell these people to bow down to this, I'm going to be like, no. I'm not going to tell them to bow down to that because that's not their God. There's only one true God. And I'm about to reveal it to them. Reveal him to them. You all to worship nothing else. You all want to worship God. You all want to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you, if you want to submit to God, yes, we're supposed to submit to God. You can submit to God and to government officials, but you cannot worship God and government officials. You cannot worship what government officials say what to worship. And if you want to know what worship means exactly, it's right here. I'll put this down real quick. It means to adore. It means to bow down. Basically, when you adore something, it means like you love it. You, just, you can't live without it. You go crazy if you don't have it. That's adored it. And then you bow down to it saying that you're lower than that. 
or you're lower than the government official, right? As far as a human being, because remember, government officials are just as human as we are. God created all of us basically the same. It's just that we grow different hair and different, you know, different body shapes. But no one, there's, there's no other God. There's no other Jesus. There's no other, there's no gods of the universe. And the universe is not alive. It is God that runs the universe and says, okay, put this plan in here, put this in. Y'all know what I mean. But that's all I got to say, guys. Just want to say I love you. I hope people truly understand because the same way that the angels rebelled against God and that the devil rebelled against God, he does not want that to happen to us human beings. Us, that ser servants of God, us, servants of God. He's going to put us through something as far as the Antichrist system. He's not going to put us through the wrath of God. No, he's not going to do that. God's not going to do that to us as far as his holy ones. But he will say, do you really love me? Let's see how much you love me. Let's see if you really will serve me no matter what. No matter how many people threaten you. No matter how many people want to kill you. No matter if a whole mob of people want to kill you like Stephen. No matter what. Will you truly keep to my son? Will you truly keep to my commandments? Will you truly keep in a relationship with me? All right, but that's all I got to say, guys. Just want to say I love you. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.